Okay, I have been putting off making this video, or rather this series of videos, for quite some time now. And the reason is, frankly, I got bored with the whole Meghan Markle saga fiasco. Basically, it felt like I was watching on my timeline on Twitter videos every day on places like GB News and articles from the Daily Mail, which were nothing more than half-winded rumours that were dragged out into 10-minute segments for clicks. Now, I've said from the very beginning with Meghan Markle, I think a lot of people missed the point. Or maybe not the point, but to me, they missed the best thing about her. The popular opinion amongst most of Meghan's detractors, to me, seems to be something like she is a conniving, manipulative, narcissistic social climber who bewitched Harry with her serpentine charm. And God knows what else. Just you wait till I get you in my coils. I think that might be part of it. In all honesty, after hours of listening to all of her podcasts and all of the things she's ever done and reading all of her blogs and everything, the conclusion I come to is she's almost like a real-life Chauncey Gardner. I can't breathe. She's there by chance. She's as hapless as Harry. Uh... Perhaps that's not exactly right. I mean, it was obviously her intention to reach the highest possible social echelon with the minimum amount of effort. But her achieving that, her getting to where she has got, uh, really depended on a whole load of variables without any one of which her plans would have just fallen apart. Her absolute lack of any discernible talent or substance and seeing where she's got in life, she should be an inspiration to all of you. It is amazing to me how absolutely lucky she is. She just seems to have met the right people at the right time who just had the right level of stupidity and naivety so as not to notice until it's too late what an absolute hack she is. Now I'm going to show you some stuff today that you've probably never seen before. And if you have seen it, you didn't really... You didn't really understand its significance. You need me to break it down in a reaction video for you. You're welcome. I really, I really think you're going to enjoy today's video just like you would enjoy all of my videos if you were to subscribe to the Daniel Boland channel. Who's Daniel Boland? Okay, so let's get into it then. I'm sure that many of you are aware that Megan used to run a blog many years ago called The Tig. But I'll bet what most of you didn't know is that it's absolutely fucking brilliant. It's post after post of comedy gold. Now, the category I'm going to be focusing on today is one called Tig Talks. Now, Tig Talks is essentially a precursor, a blueprint, if you will, will you? It's a blueprint for her podcast, Archetypes, which came years later, you'll all remember, won't you? Now, Archetypes, Megan's podcast, was not only a commercial failure because nobody listened to it, but it was also, objectively, for most people who did listen to it, shit. That's not my opinion, by the way. I, I loved archetypes. I have never heard anything so funny in my entire life. I'm not exaggerating. It's like a real-life David Brent. I couldn't believe that there was really genuinely somebody that vacuous and lacking in self-awareness in the real world out there. That someone that... <laughs> I enjoyed every single episode from beginning to end. So if you enjoyed archetypes as much as I did, uh, TikToks is going to blow <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna really like tiktoks okay so i believe this is the first ever installment of tiktoks with this woman emmy rossum now if we all cast our minds back to last year when we were all sitting down uh, you know every week eagerly awaiting the latest installment of megan's podcast archetypes do you remember the format there would be essentially uh, six or seven minutes at the beginning of uh, each podcast episode of Megan giving this long-winded introduction, giving the word of the day, which was always, you know, like a trope to do with women. The word would be bitch or angry black women or something like that. That's a trope. And uh, and it's, she'd introduce the guest with all this flowery language and uh, long-winded explanations of who the person was. It, was. it was totally bizarre. And then in the whole 45-minute episode, you would only get a good one or two minutes of the star guest, whether it be Serena Williams or Paris Hilton. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really get more than sort of five minutes of that person speaking at best. And a lot of the time, the 
uh, things they said sounded pre-recorded. It wasn't a podcast, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. A podcast in the traditional sense of, you know, two people sitting down, the host and the interesting guest, and having a conversation. None of that happened on Archetypes. Bear all that in mind when you're watching how she ran her blog, The Tig. Tig Talks. Let's have a look. Now, this, by the way, is not the best one I've read. This is the first one. This is back in 2014. So, And by the way, anyone who's going to say, well, she was young and starry-eyed back in 2014. She was a twice-divorced 33-year-old, the same age I am now, right? <laughs> There's no way I'll be looking back on anything I'm doing right now in nine years' time and thinking, how cringe. That ain't going to happen, all right? Why would I put that out there in the world? No, I'll be proud of all of this. You know when you get invited to a dinner party where you will know very few of the people and wonder who you will be seated next to? Very relatable. Unless, you know, you me, I don't get invited to dinner parties. Certainly where there could be people I don't know there, that just, <laughs> just, no. Anyway, we must bear in mind that this is a TikTok with Evie Rossum, right? Remember that. It's a TikTok. It's a talk. It's a sit down and a talk with Emmy. Rossum, whoever that is. You are as excited as you are nervous because it could go either way. Someone super cool or someone, well, not so much. Let your fears be gone when you find yourself seated next to Emmy Rossum. Oh, I really want to find out. She sounds super cool and interesting. Who is this Emmy Rossum character? I recently went to the Elle magazine and television dinner as a guest of my dear friend, Joe Z, new executive creative director at Yahoo. Yay, Joe. Yeah, yay, Joe, new creative director at Yahoo. Wonderful, he's your dear friend. Another one. Emmy Rossum, I, I guess she gets to, I mean, whoa, it's a long introduction. There must be plenty to say about this Emmy Rossum character. I know what happens at events like these. Joe is busy, he is Joe Z, after all. He's Joe Z, the... What was he again? Uh, new creative director, executive creative director at Yahoo. Yeah, I mean, he must be the life and fucking soul, mustn't he? He is Josie after all, and being pulled in many directions. I guess everyone wants to talk to him, doesn't he? I bet he's the big cheese. <laughs> you know what it's like when the creative director, the executive creative director of any of those corporations walks into a room, everyone's just like, vroom. Eyes on that guy, because yeah. he's got creative ideas and stuff so so i crossed my fingers and hoped that while he was charming the room that seated on the other side of me would be someone nice someone cool hell just give me someone who actually eats <laughs> just give us someone that eats for god's sake all right that's all she's asking for hell is it a, is it a lot to ask i just want a person that consumes food edible Comestibles. You, Emmy, beautiful and polished, yes, but also a girl who orders a steak. Can you imagine that? A beautiful woman who orders a steak. That's mental. I I'm really getting to know this girl. She seems super cool. Not only is she beautiful, she orders steak. Hell, she just eats. Also a girl who orders the steak, not the fish. Yeah, fish is for right pretentious twats, isn't it? Who orders fish? Dickhead. And chows down on truffle free... Frites? Frites? Fritters? Is that a typo? I could just be a massive scumbag who doesn't know what this is. Chows down on truffle fritters. Frites? Truffle fries? Maybe the T is the typo? I don't know. All while wearing a beautiful dress by Jay Mendel. I should have known she could have a foot in both. Having... Chanel'd the elegance of Christine in Phantom of the Opera. Chanel'd, you fucking retard. Channeled. <laughs> Channeled the elegance of Christine in Phantom of the Opera. It's doing the accent and all the things at the same time. It's an easy mistake to make. Also, shouldn't Chanel'd be a verb? I Chanel'd it. I did it really elegantly and well. That's, I thought that was what she meant. I thought she'd made up a verb. Chanel the elegance of Christine. <laughs> oh, you idiot. Channeled the elegance of Christine and Phantom of the Opera to currently dominating as the gritty Fiona on Showtime's hit series, Shameless. 
And lest we forget this NY native. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me. I think I'm still thinking of Chanel. Unless we forget this NY native was named one of the People magazine's 50 most beautiful people. Yeah, right behind Lizzo, I bet. Presumably for all of the reasons I adored her at this dinner. Yeah, People magazine, they just couldn't get over the way she ate. She orders steak and she Chanel's the room. <laughs> she chanel the shit out of us. I was blown away by the way she chanel everyone she met. She's a stunner, and she keeps it real. My kind of girl, like Sophie G from The Block. Sophie G in the house. Sophie Guerra. She's her home girl, right? Right, so that's the introduction. We know she eats this, uh, what's her name? Emmy Rossum, was it? She eats, and she wears dresses. Now we get into the nitty gritty, right? It's a TikTok with Emma Rossum. Oh, there must be an, another page, I guess, here. There's, there's no more. There's just six lines here at the end. My nickname is Emma Gray, Emmy Gray. Number two, the first thing I do when I wake up is cuddle with my dogs and put on a pot of coffee. I can't live without, colon, laughing each day. <laughs> if I had one week to escape, I would hop on a boat down the Amazon. If I only had ten dollars in my pocket, I would start singing on the street for money. Everything tastes better with burrata cheese. Uh, Emmy Rossum, everybody. That was uh, that was very um, that was TikToks. I uh, <laughs> no wonder she needs such a massive production team for archetypes, right? They that is the sum of Megan's talents or input into her programs. And that was nine years ago. She hasn't advanced. It Well, if you enjoyed that as much as I did, maybe I'm enjoying it too much. <laughs> if you enjoyed it as much as I did, give this video a thumbs up. I've got way better ones to come. She has a conversation with herself. That's a good one. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye. What a time to be alive. <laughs>